A couple of weeks ago, I released a video where I talked about the worst MLB contracts of the 2010s. Go check out that video if you want to see all the players, but after seeing the title of this video, you can see that the player that had the worst contract during the last decade was Ryan Howard. Now, growing up, I knew who Ryan Howard was. He was a monster power hitter when I started watching baseball. However, I did not have any recollection of the fact that in 2006, Ryan Howard won an MVP award. I knew that he was having 40, 50 plus home run seasons, but I did not know that he was an MVP. This realization made the uncovering of Howard's contract so interesting. How can a guy that was at the top of the baseball world fall so drastically? That is the question that I want to answer in this video. Today, we're going to be looking at the career of Ryan Howard and follow his wild career trajectory from start to finish. Let's get into it. Howard's career begins in Missouri. He played high school baseball in Wildwood, Missouri, and he played college ball at Missouri State University. From his early days, it was apparent that Howard had quite the knack for crushing a baseball, as seen through his college stats. In 2001, the Philadelphia Phillies selected Howard in the fifth round of the MLB draft. Between the years of 2001 and 2004, Howard showcased improvement in his offensive ability, especially in 2004, as between his stints in AA and AAA, he hit 46 home runs through 131 games. He became just the fifth minor league player since 1956 to hit at least 46 home runs. Also, during his stint with the Reading Phillies in AA, Howard set the single season home run record with 37 in 102 games. On September 1st, Howard was called up to the big league club. His major league appearance was a pinch hit at bat against the Braves. He would strike out, though on September 6th, he got his first major league hit, and on the 11th, he hit his first major league home run. His first month in the majors wasn't too bad. It was clear that he was ready for a full season at the major league level. Prior to the 2005 season, he was ranked by Baseball America as the 27th best prospect in the league. Howard spent some time in AAA to start the 2005 season. Why? Well, Jim Tomey had just come off an all-star season, so the Phillies were in no rush to replace him. However, the Phillies were forced to turn to Howard as Tomey suffered an injury that hindered much of his season. Howard had a big league stint during the month of May, and he became the everyday first baseman on July 1st as Tomey needed season-ending elbow surgery. Howard took his chance and ran with it. In September, he was named Rookie of the Month in the National League. And despite playing just 88 big league games, Howard won the National League Rookie of the Year. When you're averaging a home run every four games, the voters will definitely look in your direction, especially in 2005. 2006 is where Howard really took the league by storm. In fact, he did something you don't really expect from a player who is entering their first full MLB season. He won the National League MVP. Yes, in his first full MLB season, Ryan Howard won the MVP award. Remember, in 2005, he wasn't on the opening day roster and had only played 88 games throughout the season. So 2006 was technically his sophomore season, but I'm going to refer to it as his first full MLB season. So how did he win the MVP? Well, he hit 58 home runs and drove in 149 RBIs, which both led the major leagues. The rest of his stat line is very impressive too. Also, Howard set the Phillies team record in home runs, surpassing Mike Schmidt, which also made Howard the first Phillies player to hit over 50 home runs in a season. He became the eighth player in MLB history to hit 58 home runs, and Howard also broke Ralph Kinner's 1947 record for home runs in a sophomore season, becoming just the second batter to hit 50 home runs in a second season. As you can see, much of his notoriety comes from his bat, specifically his home run power, which which is why it does not surprise me that he won the home run derby that year. He also appeared in his first all-star game, and won his first and only silver slugger award. One more tidbit about this record-breaking season, Howard became one of four players in baseball history to win the Rookie of the Year and MVP awards in consecutive seasons, joining Cal Ripken Jr. and later joined by Dustin Pedroia and Chris Bryant. 2006 would be the peak of Howard's success but that doesn't mean he didn't have any more successful seasons. 2007 was actually another record-breaking season, although for the wrong reasons. At that time, he became the all-time leader in strikeouts in a season with 199. 
Fortunately for Howard, that record would be surpassed the year after and it has gone up ever since. His home runs and RBIs would still please fans. And while his batting average did noticeably drop, his OPS Plus was still elite. 2008 would be more of the same stats wise. And while he didn't compete in the All-Star game, he placed second in MVP voting and led the majors in home runs and RBIs. Although there is something that he did win. He won the NLCS MVP and won a World Series ring. And he played very well in the playoffs, especially when it counted. Heading into the 2009 season, the Phillies and Howard agreed on a three-year $54 million contract that bought out his remaining three years of salary arbitration. 2009 was more of the same stats-wise, and he played in his second All-Star game, as well as finishing third in the MVP race. The Phillies made the World Series in consecutive seasons, but they lost this time to the Yankees in six games. 2010 was a decline in home run totals, but Howard was still an above average hitter. He would also play in his third and last All-Star game. Oh, and one more thing. This was the season where he signed his noteworthy extension, his five-year $125 million contract. If you remember from my previous video, this contract did not go into effect until 2012 because Howard already signed a three-year extension the year prior. So he essentially had a seven-year contract worth $161 million, which is coincidentally the same exact contract for a current underperforming power hitter. The name is on the tip of my tongue, but I can't quite remember it. Oh well, I'm sure you guys will know. 2011 would be Howard's final noteworthy season, which also included a noteworthy moment that altered the course of his career. In Game 5 of the NLDS against the St. Louis Cardinals, Howard grounded out on the final play of the game. But when he ran out of the batter's box, he immediately showed discomfort in his leg and he would fall to the ground. He tore his Achilles tendon, an injury that kept him out until July 2012. From that moment on, Howard would never be the same. Over the next five seasons, while it was apparent he still had some power in his bat, he was ultimately a liability. His contract became among the worst in the league. Just to throw in some positivity, in 2014, Howard became the fastest player in MLB history to 1,000 RBIs, accomplishing the feat in 1,230 games. Although he did lead the league in strikeouts with 190, he actually has the most golden sombreros in MLB history, meaning he has struck out four times in a game more than anyone else in MLB history, specifically 27 times. Howard's time in Philadelphia ended after the 2016 season as the team declined his team option. In his final game in Philadelphia, he received a standing ovation from the crowd, thanking him for his time with the team. Over the next couple of seasons, he received minor league contracts from the Braves and Rockies, but he would never go back to the big leagues. He officially retired on September 4th, 2018. His career stats show a player who had a great power bat and could get on base. His career war stats aren't too kind to him, although Fangraphs likes him a little bit more. Overall, his career is a tale of two halves. Unfortunately, it was an injury that exacerbated his decline. However, there was something else that affected his play. The rise of the infield shift. 538 wrote a great article on Ryan Howard and how the shift affected his career. During his career, Howard pulled ground balls 66.5% of the time, compared to the 2017 league average of 53.8%, which was the year this article was written. And it seemed like Howard wasn't doing much to adapt. In 2014, Phillies manager Rin Sandberg said in spring training that he was looking for Howard to use his whole body with his swing so he can utilize the whole field. However, after a game in 2015, Howard said that he is still hitting the ball hard despite those balls being hit into the shifts. So he's just going to keep swinging. This may insinuate that he wasn't planning to adjust to the shift, rather he had the mindset that sooner or later, he will get the hits because he's still hitting the ball hard. Well, that's not what would happen. These are stats between the years of 2010 and 2016 that clearly show the infield shift affecting Howard's offensive output. His stats where he did not face the shift may seem inflated. That is because he rarely got the chance to hit without the shift. From 2010 to 2016, Howard had only 224 plate appearances where he did not face the shift compared to 1,699 with the shift on. 
during this time, teams were using shifts more and more often than ever before, especially against slow pull heavy hitters like Ryan Howard. As a result, Howard saw more shifts than anyone except David Ortiz. While Ortiz adapted, Howard did not. Couple that with his significant Achilles injury in 2011, and you have a case for a rapid decline. While Howard's career didn't end with the Hall of Fame trajectory that many had predicted, his career was far from an underperformance. He is still a significant figure in Philly's history, and Philly fans still love him. The contract is in the past, so he earned all of his money, which got him this beachfront mansion that he sold in 2019 for $16.5 million. And now he is an analyst for ESPN. All in all, he had a successful career. I think Kareen Landry from Fangraphs, now with the Phillies front office, puts it best. He wasn't just a slugger who lucked into a massive contract. He was the best power hitter in baseball for an extended stretch of time. From 2006 to 2009, he hit more home runs than anyone in the game. And in regards to claims that Howard was the worst player in the league, she said, the worst player in Major League Baseball is an astonishingly great baseball player. Replacement level players, and even those who are below replacement level, are still professional athletes capable of phenomenal feats. And in Ryan Howard's case, that manifests itself and prolific displays of power. Ryan Howard has become a punchline due to a contract extension, but he's also one of the best power hitters of this generation. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching.